Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be installing Red Hat Linux version 8.5 in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. Before we begin, let's take a look at the minimum requirements to get this installed. Your PC is gonna to have to have at least two gigs of RAM, four was better. You're gonna need 20 gigs of hard disk space, at least two CPU cores, and you're also going to need the ISO image file that we'll be downloading directly from the website. You're gonna need VirtualBox, and if you don't have VirtualBox already installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. All the steps and tools used in this video will be linked in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to grow my channel as big as possible to reach as many users as I can. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at getting this installed. All right, here we are at our Windows 10 desktop and I'm gonna open up my browser. And the website that we're at right now is the developer website for Red Hat Linux. And what you need to do in order to download this for free, you, so you have to sign up as a developer and you have to activate your subscription. So I'll quickly walk through those steps right now. Click on this button right over here. So you have to type in an email address or you can sign in with one of these options over here. I'm just gonna use my Gmail account. And then it's gonna want you to sign in and select a password. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. And then we wanna select that we've agreed to the terms and conditions and click on create my account. Okay, and now that we've signed up, we're able to now download the ISO image file. The one I'm gonna be downloading is gonna be the DVD ISO 64-bit version right over here, 8.5. If you wanna download the beta version, it's right over here, it may not be as stable. I'm gonna go with the latest release and the most stable one, which is 8.5. So go ahead and click on download. And it looks like it's gonna ask for a little bit more information. So I'll go ahead and provide that right now real quickly. Okay, so we've filled all of the information. As you can see, it's gonna start downloading the ISO image file. This will take a few minutes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to the next step. So you can see that the ISO image file is now completed. Uh, I can go ahead and close my browser. I'm gonna make sure I know where it is because it's important to locate this file. We'll need it during the installation. It's in right now, it's in my downloads folder right over here. And as you can see, it's 10.2 gigs. And I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this for now. And I'm gonna open up my VirtualBox VM manager. Okay, so we have our VirtualBox manager open. The first thing we're gonna do is click on the new button up here at the top, and we're gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna call mine Red Hat 8.5. The machine folder I'm gonna leave as default. Uh, Linux is the type, and the version is gonna be Red Hat 64-bit. That all looks good. You can click on next. For RAM, you're gonna to wanna to have at least four gigs of RAM for, for this to run properly. So I'll put in four gigs here and then you can click on next. We're gonna leave the default option here and click on create. And VDI will leave this as default as well, click on next. And dynamically allocated, we'll click on next. And for the hard disk space, you're gonna want at least 20 or more gigs. I'll put in 25 gigs here and then click on create. A couple more things that we need to do. We wanna make sure that we have Red Hat selected on the left-hand side and then click on settings. Inside display for video memory, I like to just max this out always and leave that to the top. And then under storage, we wanna select the empty disk over here. And this is where we need to select the ISO image file. So we're gonna click on this little disk over here and then choose a disk file. And we're gonna go into our downloads folder and here is the ISO. We'll select that and then click on open. Now we can click on okay and we're ready to start the installation, so we'll click on Start. So right off the bat, we have the option to select the installation option. We're gonna be using the first one on the list, then we'll hit Enter on our keyboard. Okay, so it's now loaded up, and what we're gonna do is leave the default options. If you wanna customize this based on your language or region, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna be leaving mine as the US default, and then click on Continue. So it takes a few seconds, but it'll autofill everything in here. So right now for the source installation, we're gonna be using the auto detect option, which will be selecting our ISO image file. And for software selection, now you can select whichever version is best for you. For this installation, I'm gonna be selecting workstation and then I'll click on done. The root password, it's a good idea to set your root password now. You can also do it later, but I'm gonna go ahead and do mine right now and then click on done. And the last option that we have to select is the installation destination. We're gonna click on this and we have our virtual disk selected over here. We just have to click on that and then we can click on done. If you wanna create a user, you can go ahead and do that as well right over here. Uh, I'm gonna be leaving everything as default for now. I'll click on begin the installation. Okay, so the installation is now complete. Uh, we're ready to reboot the system. In the boot menu, we're just gonna select the first option here. Last couple of steps is just to accept the end user agreement, the license information that we need to accept. So you can go ahead and go over the license agreement, check the I accept, and then click on done. System information and user creation, that's if you'd like to set it up. I'll just set up a user right now so you can see the process. You click it in here and then you can go ahead and type a name. Automatically creates the username and then you can type in a password. And when you have that in there, you can just click on done and our user's created. 
Now that we have this all done, we can go ahead and click on Finish Configuration. Okay, and now we're at the user. We just created this user right now, so we're gonna go ahead and type in the password for it, and it's gonna sign us in. And we get the welcome wizard. So the welcome wizard, you can just leave everything as default if you'd like. You could also customize it to your region by clicking on next here. And I'll be leaving this as default. And privacy, I'm gonna turn this off for now. Choose the features that go along with your preferences. Click on next and then skip. And then we're done. We can start using Red Hat. There we go. And it'll just give you a little bit of a tutorial on how to use the interface. If you don't wanna do that, you can click on the X in the corner. And here we are at the Red Hat desktop on VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. We have the installation successfully completed. If you thought this video was useful, please smash the like button. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. Subscribe if you're looking for more tutorials on virtual machines and anything related to that. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.